the first attempt at a pilot for the Big Bang Theory it was an utter failure. I got a call from CBS saying, we're not picking up the, the show, but would you consider trying it again? And I was <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I, I would. Yeah. And maybe, you know, you have to recast female lead. And I went, no, the problem is that the script I wrote sucks. <laughs> you know, I need to write another script. What's the plan here? What's it look like? Looks like you're gonna jump. Danny. Smart money's on splat. There's no reason to stick around. People, they only like me for my money and that's all fucking gone. Bobby, look man, I know it's hard. I've been there. I ran through every last penny that I had, but I'm not giving up. There's too much good in the world, and I want to be a part of it. When was the last time you ate? Had a decent night's sleep. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a couple days, you know? Uh, kind of been on a run. That could be affecting your thinking. Just come on down. OK, all right. Ah. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna set that aside for the moment and enjoy the fact that a man is alive because we did the right thing. Yeah, I guess. Welcome to Behind the Lens. He needs no introduction. If you watch television at all, you know the name Chuck Lorre from Two and a Half Men and uh, Big Bang Theory and Young Sheldon, on and on and on, to Bookie, which is right now on Max in its first season, and it is an addictive show. If you haven't seen it, you got to watch it. Welcome, Chuck Lorre. Thank you. i got to tell you, um, you just keep turning them out. It really is something. I mean, you've never run out of ideas or anything, and, uh, and, and you find new ways. Who thought of a show about a bookie? You know, there's none on television. <laughs> the sports gambling was wide open. Yeah. Yeah, right. no, I'm surprised by that. Um, I, I've always had it in the back of my mind to do something uh, with people who are working outside the grid. That, yeah. that are working, you know, in the gray areas. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, and um, I was approached about developing something for Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah. And uh, he's an incredible stand-up, and the inclination would be to do something that mines his stand-up. Then I saw a small scene he did in The Irishman, where he played uh, Crazy Joe Gallo opposite... He, he was really good in that. He's opposite Bob De Niro and, and Joe Pesci, and he was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and I went, oh. <laughs> I don't want to do a show about a psychotic killer, which <laughs> right. was what he was playing. You never do uh, violence in your show. You know, uh, violence is, you know, is, a, is the banana peel in my world. Yeah. You know, uh, that's, we don't, no, we don't you do, uh, the stories are so much smaller in yeah. everything I've always done. Uh, the stakes are, you know, they're small, they're family, they're intimate. Right. Uh, but this, this was an opportunity to step outside that and, uh, and I, uh, I actually said to my partner on this, uh, Nick Bakai, you know, we should find something to do with Sebastian that that is not he's not a good citizen, right? Right. right? Yeah. And 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 Nick, uh, as as it turned out, has a background in sports gambling. He was a, he was a, he was a, he had his own show on ESPN many years wow. ago, talking about betting on the NFL. Wow. So he he knows all about that world so perfect. He, so he said how about a bookie and I went thank you <laughs> <laughs> and and we started writing and uh, we actually you know we uh, we kind of wrote the script on spec we, we yeah. let's see let's try this see what happens and, and Sebastian signed on and and it suddenly became a thing that's amazing. When you say you're writing a script on spec, I think of new writers who are just trying to get Chuck Lorre to look at their script. <coughs> you actually write things on spec. Uh, well, it's a way to find out for sure, if you're right, if if there's something there, yeah, it, it's actually for my benefit as well to write a script uh, without any obligations to right. studios or actors or anybody. It's it's an opportunity to sit down and go, is this as good as we think it is, or should we run from this because it's it's it, it doesn't 
open up to a world that would uh, support a series. Single camera. It's uh, not like most of your shows here. No, and Sheldon's single. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. But most of them aren't that. And this is really kind of gritty going out into the city mm -hmm. in of Los Angeles. So it's a different setting for you. And it's a streamer. It's yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. This is your second. You did Netflix, obviously, Kaminsky Method. Right. Do you enjoy that? Uh, freedom, because this show, have, if you haven't seen it yet, when you see it, you'll see you have a lot of freedom you would never have on a network. It takes some getting, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, the you know the baby elephant story of you know the elephant that's tied to you know to you know has manacled yeah. to, to a stake and uh, and then you know and then slowly over time they become so accustomed to to being manacled that they just don't go anywhere, yeah. and, and that's what happens after you know decades of network yeah. <laughs> sitcoms in front of an audience, you, you become your own censor. Yeah. You restrict yourself because you've been trained to. Right. You know, because it's a very, you know, the, the network sitcom is a, is a very tightly controlled thing and there's yeah. advertisers and network standards and the United States government's involved in what you do with the FCC. Yeah. You know, so. you have, you know, so this, this was a, uh, this was an, uh, an opportunity. It, it took some time. Every once in a while, I'd look up and go, Nick, we can do anything we want. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I mean, yeah. the restrictions uh, are only the ones we placed on ourselves. Right, yeah. And, uh, and it was almost an epiphany uh, in, as we were writing this thing. Was, Wait a minute. These guys are criminals, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're not running around. And we made it clear they're not the break the kneecap guys. No. Not, and that came from the research we did with, with real bookies. And the, the violent stuff is, is uh, movies and, and TV shows of yore. Yeah. Uh, right now, when, when someone doesn't pay a bookie a no. debt that they owe, they're just simply, you know, cut off from any future, future you know, action. Yeah. And other bookies are alerted to the fact that that guy's no that guy's not going to pay if he loses, or he might not pay. That's the that's the penalty. Not uh, you break somebody's kneecap, they still haven't paid you. Right. <laughs> right? And you've now created, yeah. you know, and and you've and now you know now it's a police action. Exactly. If, if it yeah. gets goes too far, so so we took violence out of this for the most yeah. part, not entirely, yeah. because some of the people they deal with are, are not wonderful people. No. And it's an all-cash business, which I find fascinating. <coughs> I love you're moving that cash, which is, you know, dicey. And every <laughs> time we talk to a bookie, a real bookie, yeah. about cash, they always lie to us. Really? They always lie. No, yeah, no, you can't pay your mortgage with cash. You can't pay your phone bill with cash. Yes, you can. No, you can't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, there's all sorts of ways you can do it. And there's also a barter industry. Right. Which we've tried to, you know, indicate they own a piece of a funeral parlor. They own a piece of a gift shop. They own a piece of a sports bar. That's why, and of course, Charlie Sheen, you know, coming in trying as, to as himself right. and trying to pawn off some sports memorabilia, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, which was a lot of fun. You know, oh, I bet, I bet yeah. that was. He yeah. was so he, you know, he's such a good actor and comic actor. Yeah. His timing yeah. is so perfect. I understand you're bringing him back for season two. He is in season two. I don't want to spoil it, but it's a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous hot cameo that he does in season two. Uh, and his chops are, as always, they're undiminished. He's got great comic chops. It's great that you could get back together because obviously that was a very famous breakup. Um, Breakup is the nicest word <laughs> you could call it. For you the know. whole thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nuclear implosion. Um, yeah, it was wonderful. It, we, we had a great time. Yeah. yeah. You know what I find, too, uh, in watching uh, Bookie? Sebastian Maniscalco, like somebody like a Paul Reiser, who you had in Kaminsky, mm -hmm. who was also a stand-up, yeah. make the best dramatic actors. <clears throat> There's yeah. something about it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you it, know? Yeah, and you see it all the time. You see it all the time. That uh, there's something about that muscle that's honed holding a microphone, you know, right. and all by yourself. Uh, and that somehow, and it is a, it is a big transition to, uh, to be part of an ensemble. Right. Because stand-ups, it's you, baby. You know, yeah. <laughs> you win, win or lose. I saw Sebastian fail. do his act at the Forum. This right. is where Bruce Springsteen plays. Right, right, you know, yeah. Five Nights in Madison Square Garden. Comedy yeah. in that kind of thing, you know. I mean, he's top of the top in that. But right. here, 
it's a blended, wonderful ensemble all the way around. It's a different muscle to, to be part of an ensemble, and uh, and and not everybody can do it. Right. You know, it, it's a, it's a, a little bit of a surrender in that, um, the words are not mine. Yeah. You know, and you know, every word in a stand-up act, that's his words. And for some stand-ups, it, it's it's a big hurdle to get over trusting someone else's instincts. Right. And Sebastian's been entirely supportive of us since, and you write since all day the, one. You write all the episodes. Me, with, and, me with and Nick, Nick have written them all. Yeah, yeah. you've written them all. That's yeah. a lot of shows. We'll bring in other writers, obviously, and things. It's, uh, you oh. like that level of control, right down to being a writer, which is what you started as. So. Well, I, and I never stopped being one. Never stop. No. Yeah, uh, and, <laughs> and this is eight episodes, which when you're coming from network television and you're doing 22 yeah this is eight <laughs> eight <laughs> we, we just have to do eight and you know they're like i've been watching they're like all 23 minutes when you're watching them you know probably pretty closer to network time than than, than streaming time yeah I, I i don't know how that works <laughs> they're like little short films well, one of the coolest <laughs> things about uh the the whole streaming thing and i certainly didn't understand it when it started uh, and when I began with Kaminsky is, um, especially Netflix drops everything at once. Right. Right. And uh, well, that's strange, yeah. right? Because I come from a world where, you yeah. know, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Right. But what happens uh, with that sort of approach is the audience can, uh, can, can participate in the show almost like a book. Yeah. Y you can read a book and then put it down. Or you can keep reading, right? You know, and it's you know, and it's chapters in a book, yeah. and uh, and you know for a fact that uh, the audience uh, on episode four saw one, two, and three. That's right. And that's yeah. not true in network television. No. On any given night, uh, you have no idea if the audience saw last week's show. That's interesting. You're right because I know that Netflix, all of them, I get notifications. When are you going to finish watching this thing mm -hmm. that you started? Right. It's Big Brother is watching. It really they, is. They watch of, you watch them. They they're watching us watching. Yes, which, I'm convinced they know when you go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, you hit pause. You come back four minutes later, or eight minutes later if you have prostate issues. <laughs> and they know, uh, you know, I, I, we know where he didn't turn it off. He just had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know. That's fast. It's fascinating it's the way a, this has is changed. A little from, creepy, but it is, you know, it is the times we live in, and you're adapting to it as you are sticking with network television too. I thought this season <clears throat> with Young Sheldon going off and Bob Loves uh, Abishola going <clears throat> off <clears throat> of CBS same year that maybe this would be the first time we weren't going to have uh, Chuck Lorre on uh, CBS, for instance, or anything. But then they just announced Georgie, uh, the uh, spinoff. Georgie and Mandy's first marriage. Yeah. First marriage. Yeah, we're going to do it in front of an audience. In front of an audience, yeah. which is, I love uh, multicam shows. It's a, get, you get to put on a play. Yeah. It's an entirely different way of telling a story. Yeah. It's the sitcom in front of an audience is entirely performance in words. Yeah. You know, the camera is the camera. You know, boom on you, boom on me. Yeah. And that's it. Maybe there's a camera over there. Right. Maybe. How did you decide to do this particular spin-off? Obviously Young Sheldon was a spin-off of Big Bang and now you're doing a spin-off. Mm -hmm. You've got this whole uh we fell in love with Montana and Emily's relationship and um and it just sort of became obvious that this is a story that should go on. Uh, these young people trying to raise a child. Right. Um, they have no business being married. Yeah. They have no business being parents. <laughs> and, that the, and, and they are. And, and yeah. it seemed, you know, it, Steve Holland and Steve Malero, who I've been working with for, oh my goodness, uh, easily over 20 years, going yeah. back to the beginning of Big Bang, um, they were the first ones to say, this relationship, we're not done with this relationship. We need to pursue it. And, and they were the ones who said, let's go back to the audience because it's very small. Yeah. It's a small, it, you know, uh, when you put a show in front of 200 people, you can't go mountain climbing. Right. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, it, it is what it is. It's, it's a play. It's two people talking on a couch or in yeah. the kitchen. And, uh, and it just seemed to lend itself to that genre and uh, it may not be the genre that's considered sophisticated or anything but 
it's it's appropriate for this kind of story. No, you know, there's something I have to confess to you. I have for the last few months been watching Two and a Half Men nightly when I'm at home. I just love it. You know, it's on 7.30 every night in L.A., and my wife loves it, too. And I just watched it last night. It was the one where um, Alan was writing a screenplay, and it was like part part one of that. Um, and we made 260 episodes. I'm not really. I, you you co-wrote it with your creator. <laughs> I did. Okay. <laughs> it starts out with him writing a screenplay. I and, have vague memory yeah. of that. Yeah. <laughs> See, you write so much stuff you can't even remember it. That's yeah, all right. <laughs> once, you, once you're done, you move on, you know, and you, you, yeah. Know, yeah, you don't linger. But do you ever watch, go back and oh, look I do. at this show? I it love is what so we good. Did. I love what we did. Those two are just fantastic. <laughs> together. So when do you decide you want to spend all this time with a, a Big Bang? That was like 11 seasons or something uh, all in, 12. even with Ashton when he 12. came in. Oh, you mean Big Bang? Uh, Big going? Bang was oh, 12 and the other one was... Uh, 12 as well. Yeah. But yeah, in the last four with Ashton. Yeah. yeah. Do you know when it's time to end it or just... Um, it just uh... Sometimes you're told. Yeah. <laughs> that, really? That it's over. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, young Sheldon we knew. That you know, uh, well, the kid's going to be twenty-five. You know, yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> you know, he, he, the story's been told. You yeah. know, and and to go further would have been uh, just didn't feel appropriate. I just right. feel like we told the story, and 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 per the, the 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 what we've done on Big Bang is, at fourteen he goes to Cal Caltech. Yeah, and and uh, and we wanted to stay true to that uh, that backstory, and. Um, I, I couldn't be more proud of how we we ended the series. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah it's really you, special. And you get that you get to do a finale. Some of these shows they <laughs> they just cancel them yeah, and you get yanked. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I heard that's what's happening with the Connors. Is they were going to uh, they sort of did an extra scene in case they got canceled, but they're going to come back for six episodes and give them a finale. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. and and all of that. I, I, you know, Netflix gave me that opportunity. With Kaminsky. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, we got to do that third season uh, after you know, uh, you know, which was you know uh, Michael Douglas's character dealing with the aftermath of having lost his best friend. Yeah. You know, the Alan Arkin's character. That was a great show. Thank I you. talked to you many times about that, and yeah. you know, I uh, that casting and see Alan Arkin, you know, you gave him a gift, I think, too. In being in that show. You get to work with genius like that. Yeah, that's it. And you still like it. You still love it doing this? I get, I get to play in the sandbox. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to keep playing until somebody says go home. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's still fun. Here, here's my job. My job is to boil down to one sentence. Make people laugh. Right. You know, create characters and relationships and stories that are fundamentally about cause laughter. Right. That's nice. <laughs> you know, that's a nice way to spend your day. Right, you know? exactly. Uh, you know, if, especially if you succeed. When you don't succeed, it breaks your heart. Yeah. But the goal is laughter. It's yeah. It's really that simple. I mean, your first time out as a showrunner or a producer was Franny's turn. Mm -hmm. And I think it was six episodes or something before they... Uh, in the coveted Saturday at 8 <laughs> time slot. I didn't even know they, they had that anymore. Didn't have any faith in it at all. <laughs> I don't think all six episodes aired. But uh, it was my first chance, uh, you know, and uh, I remember Tom Warner came to my office after uh, CBS uh, canceled it, and he said, well, that was a noble failure. <laughs> and I went, because I thought my career was over. Yeah, you that's know? what I was going to ask. Yeah, I thought, oh, that's it. I had my shot. I didn't, I'm done. And I, I was like, I'm sorry, what? He goes, it was a good show. It didn't work. Let's try something else. Wow. And I was like, I get to try again? <laughs> <laughs> You're not sending me home? I was right. so grateful. And then that led to? Grace Under Fire, which yeah. was a big hit. Which was a big hit. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. See, I would have been in your position. I would have gone, okay, that's it. Nobody loves me. I'm out. And I'd get depressed. But you know, getting a second chance is, uh, is, uh, is a gift you shouldn't. You know, overlook I, yeah. the first attempt at a pilot for the Big Bang Theory. It was an utter failure. Really? Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, didn't have uh, Kaylee Cuoco. We didn't have Simon, um, and we didn't have Kunal, and the story was a mess. And uh, I got a call from CBS saying we're not picking up the the show, but would you consider trying it again? And I was <laughs> like, 
uh, yeah, I, I would. Yeah. And maybe, you know, you have to recast female lead. And I went, no, the problem is the script I wrote sucks. <laughs> you know, I need to write another script. Wow. And, and, and Bill Prady and I uh, endeavored to write another script. And almost one year later, we shot it, you know, uh, and uh, with the cast as, it be, you know, as, as we now know it. And, um, and it was magical. Yeah. And Jimmy Burroughs, there was a moment when Jim Parsons is trying to decide where to sit if he's not in his spot. Right. There was that wonderful scene where, where Kelly's character sits in his spot, uh -huh. and, and he's completely bewildered because that's where I sit. Yeah, right. And it was a tour de force from Jim, and I was on the stage watching it in front of a live studio audience, and Jimmy Burroughs looks over at me and goes, does that? <laughs> and, I, I, and I just went, this is a gift. Yeah. Yeah. And look what happened. Yeah. I mean, amazing. You know, I, I remember sitting with you uh, doing something at the Writers Guild with Norman Lear, oh. the two of you. Yeah, yeah. And I knew that the specialness of that moment was incredible. But, yeah. you know, to have inspirations like that and to see that and to be able to really get to their level in doing this is a gift, too, I think. I don't know that you get to that level, but, you know, he, he's certainly an inspiration Yeah. in that, you know, oh, he broke ground. The comedy he did change the culture. Yeah. It's monumental, you know, uh, effect of a, of a TV comedy. Yeah. He changed the culture. He dealt with issues, but see, that's what you yeah. do, too. I mean, you deal with addiction. You deal with weight. You deal, you know, on all these different shows I'm thinking of. There's something, a gambling, mm -hmm. all of this is well, yeah, tough to I guess the, Kaminsky for me was about getting old. Yeah. It's just the, you know, without, without, without the bucket list comedy, right. take the bucket list comedy out of it, just deal with the minutia of getting old. Exactly. Uh, which is, is something I'm, you know, it's close to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. And you get to keep doing it. Well, uh, you know, I can't wait for season two, first off, of Bookie. Are you in production yet on that? Yeah, we're in production right now. There's so much to do since season one. I mean, this whole Shohei Otani thing and everything. And we're, it's front page news. Yeah. You know, and those uh, gambling, sports gambling is going to be a, a major issue. I've, it is now, but right. because of the uh, online gambling, you, you can bet on a football game all through the football game. <laughs> it's like, well, that's kind of crazy. On your phone. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's devastating when, when people lose control over it. And it's yeah. easy easy to do. It's, it's become so easy. Yeah. You know. It's amazing. Well, of course, the NFL doesn't condone that. Well, you know, this thing, we, we couldn't get any, uh, they wouldn't give us the rights to any footage because we don't condone illegal yeah. gambling. Right, yeah. And let's say, let's just say it out loud. For the NFL, illegal gambling is gambling they don't have a piece of. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, so. That's 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 the definition of illegal to them, that's yes. for sure. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, the fan yeah. duel and all the DraftKings stuff, they, yeah. you know, they participate in that. It's amazing. Well, I'll make a bet this, this show goes for uh, more than two seasons. There's a lot of material you can play with here. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. I, I'm real Where can doing I place it. that bet? I'm going to bet. You probably... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know, you, you can bet on the Oscars, you know, you, yeah. you, you can, yeah. You're not supposed to bet on the Oscars because two people know the outcome. Right. Uh, the, but you can't. Okay. Yeah. But you can't, yeah. you know, <laughs> and we actually have, we, we did a joke on, on Bookie about, uh, you know, uh, after the Super Bowl, there's not a lot going on. Right. You know, and uh, they're getting calls. They want to bet, you know, you know, trying to place a bet on, 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 on the song that wins best song at the Oscars, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some Taylor Swift stuff in there. It's, a, it's true. Uh, Chuck Laurie, always fun to talk to you. Thank uh, you. Thanks for joining us on Behind the Lens. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, man.